technology. And we also have found ourselves saying out loud more often the things we are grateful for. Oh God, I am grateful for shelter. I am grateful for health care. I am grateful for food on the table. I am grateful that the sun is shining. And to say those things out loud and uh, not let it just be something we say, but something that we feel so deeply in our hearts. Uh, this pandemic is, is really like all other uh, natural diseases and disasters. It is a consequence of living in a fallen world. Um, unlike uh, some have proclaimed uh, lately, uh, God did not cause this pandemic as a judgment upon us. Um, God did not cause this as a punishment. Uh, but also neither has God left us to face it alone. It certainly is a part of, of, of living in a fallen world. Um, did God know this? Certainly. Uh, does God have the power to stop it? Yes. Uh, but God has the power for a lot of things. And again, our human minds cannot interpret uh, when or how or why. Uh, it comes back again to just trusting in the goodness of God, even in the midst of really difficult things. God is with us in this, and just as surely as God is with us in all things. God is with health care workers and teachers trying to figure out how to teach differently and uh, preachers and leaders in churches trying to figure out how to continue to share the love of Christ in new and creative ways. And God is with all of those business folks who are trying to figure out how to uh, live differently in this day and time. And God is not only hurting along with us, but I believe God is redeeming us. God is redeeming this situation, and God is going to make good out of it. You think about all the ways that people have been extremely creative, or all uh, the sense of generosity and love. Sometimes uh, people that have cooperated with one another that uh, a couple months ago, we, we would have said, you know, they would have never cooperated with one another. Uh, so I believe that God will certainly bring good things um, out of this. COVID-19 is a bad thing. Um, there are certainly difficulties that have come from it. But ever more deeply, I hope and pray that we are just embracing the goodness of God and trusting God in the midst of it. Jesus spent his entire life and into his death and resurrection trying to help us to understand that ultimately our lives belong to God and that God is uh, in control of all things. He submitted his life to God in every way um, and it turned out really good for him. Uh, and I have no doubt that the same will be true for us. During this season of change with God's help, may we continue to grow ever deeper uh, in our relationship with God and the way that we relate and love one another and in the ways that God calls us to change. Um, and when God speaks a word to us and maybe there's one direction that we want to go and God says, no, not that way, this way, even if we'd rather go that way, <laughs> uh, let us hear God say, turn, uh, go this way, follow this path, for this is the path that I have laid out for you. I've heard a lot of people say, I can't wait till we return to normal. And you remember what I said a couple of weeks ago, a quote by Barbara Johnson, normal is just a setting on the dryer. I'm not sure we ever really totally had normal, but we certainly um, had life that was quite different than it is now. But listen to this other quote that I found significant this week. It's hard to go back to normal when normal has disappeared. Mm. So uh, we could face that with anger and resistance, or we can say it is the way it is. Uh, normal has disappeared, and we're going to have to live differently. And instead of being angry and pushing against it, uh, we hear God speak. We turn in a new direction, um, and we live ever differently into the differences that we may have to face in the days to come. Uh, in these moments, let us be reminded that the darkest, most painful moment in all of history, our God turned in to the most amazing gift. The death and the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ turned into resurrection.
and it turned into the gift of the Holy Spirit living within us each and every day. So if God can do that, and God did, and God does, then God can certainly turn these days into a place of trust and hope and pivoting in the right direction. Alexander Graham Bell once said, when one door closes, another opens. But we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which is opened for us. Some doors have closed, no doubt about it. But let's not look so long and so regretfully at those closed doors that we don't see the open doors that God has placed before us. In prayer, may it be so. Let us pray. Lord of life, hope, salvation, and Lord of daily living, help us to clearly hear the voice of God. Remind us of the ways that you speak, O God. You speak through your word, the Bible. You speak through other people that we trust, people who have your spirit within them. You speak to us as we read your word and listen and understand and obey. You speak to us as we have a conversation with you in prayer, as we speak and as we listen. You speak to us through the life of Jesus and the example that he set. Oh God, speak to us now. Help us to know which way to turn. And help us to be bold to go that way. Guide our steps. Help us hear when you tell us the certain direction to go. And if we don't hear you speak about a direction, help us to be okay with standing still in the moment until we do hear you. You are forever loving and forever good and forever kind, and our lives are in your hands. We give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. It is such a great honor to be in ministry uh, through this church and in this community and in God's broader world. Uh, it is so good to be in ministry alongside you. And so we continue to give thanks to God for your generosity of prayers and presence, gift, service, and witness in the way that you love our Lord. And so now as we come to a time of offering, we offer our financial resources to God so that God's holy word might continue in us and through us. Thanks be to God. Let us give thanks to God. Let us share together our offertory prayer that you see in your bulletin. Christ has brought us together, together in faith, together in worship, 
together in hope, together in love. We have gathered together to be sent out again in new and creative ways with the welcome message of God's love. Receive this offering of time, prayer, resources, attention, and love, and help us to be living testimonies of Christ's love. Amen. And our praises as we are sent out into God's world comes through our closing hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb of God grown. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him with the of life who triumphed o'er the grave and prize victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways. From pole to pole that wars may cease, and all be prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his pierced feet. For those of you who may be tired of pivoting, <laughs> uh, just take a little bit of time today and just um, sit in the sun and bask in the goodness of God and say that to God. I'm tired of pivoting, uh, but it will come again and our Lord will be with us. And throughout that time of stillness, you'll be given the strength to pivot once again. Our Lord is with us always in all things. May you always be blessed to be a blessing in his holy name. Let us share our blessing together. May the peace of God enfold us, the love of God uphold us, the wisdom of God control us, and lead us into all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.